Yo, 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 welcome to Hard Pass. I am your host, Jacques Slade. It's the show that's feeling a little left out of the party. And no, it's not because Shaq didn't wish me a happy birthday, but had plenty of time for Jacqueline and Jackie. Come, you don't love me, man. All right, let's start with some hot takes. Like all of you, I'm going through Last Dance withdrawal. Be warned, it's gonna be scattered throughout this entire episode. After five weeks of reliving the greatness that was the 1990s Bulls, I found myself wondering what the next big sports doc was going to be. I even pitched some ideas in last week's episode. Well, turns out, ESPN was thinking the same thing because they just announced that they are dropping a Tampa Brady doc next year called Man in the Arena, and I'm kinda optimistic. Like, since Tampa is still playing, I doubt we're gonna get too many react to this wild thing and no teammate or rival said gifts because he wants to preserve his relationships and I don't see Bill Belichick being a part of this. And even if he is, he's not gonna spill the tea. Like. I'd rather get a Randy Moss straight cash homie doc about his time with the Raiders first, then a Tampa Brady one. You know, commitment to excellence and that's, that's the Raiders slogan, right? That's right. Somebody not happy with the last dance is Horace Grant, who feels like the doc shortchanged his contribution to the Bulls first three-peat, which I agree with and is not a fan of Michael Jordan saying Horace was a source for the infamous Jordan rules book. Grant has made headlines this week speaking out against Jordan, but one of my favorite lines is his response to a story that MJ tried to take his food after a bad game. He said, you come back and tried to take my food, I would have whooped his ass. There wouldn't be no Air Jordans now. There wouldn't be no six championships. I guarantee you that. Damn. Kick his ass if that's true, I guess, Horace, but save the Jordans. A whole generation of bloggers and YouTubers are eating right now because of those J's. Now, a name that didn't get mentioned during this doc, but many NBA diehards recognized in the background was Rusty LaRue, a bench player for the Bulls. He tweeted out a list of aliases players would use when they were on the road and checking into hotels. There's been a lot of speculation as to which name Michael Jordan used. My guess is Oscar Miles, but I love that somebody used Johnny Walker and Austin Powers. Like, if I was MJ level famous, what would my alias be? I would just spell Cousteau, like, the wrong way, you know, C-O-U-S-T-E-A-U. Yeah, that spelling's terrible. Who would ever think of doing it like that? Terrible. Another possible candidate for a Last Dance style doc is the story of Vince Carter's role in making the dunk contest irrelevant until Zach Levine and Aaron Gordon came along 15 years later. I mean, I'll settle for a director's commentary by Vince of his dunks during charity games like this. <laughs> Dude was already doing his dunk contest dunks months before that night in Oakland. I have to ask though, if you were in the crowd on either of those nights, are you happy that he brought those dunks back for All Star or are you upset that he just repeated them? I think it's cool. It doesn't bother me at all, but I wanna know what you guys think. Um, NASA scientists gave us hope and took it away almost immediately when they said that they believe that there is a parallel universe that exists where time goes backwards. In sneaker terms, you already have the Chunky Dunky SBs in the alternate universe, but after the 26, you lose them since they're moving back in time and we get it since we're moving forward. However, NASA has since said maybe nah to a parallel universe right now. <sighs> now I know how Ant-Man feels when Iron Man told him time travel doesn't work like it does in Back to the Future. I was really hoping alternate universe's me was enjoying those dunks already. So, Earlier this week, HBO Max announced that they will be actually doing the unthinkable and hashtag release the Snyder Cut, the long rumored version of the Justice League's movie that featured director Zack Snyder's original version of the DCU team up. Snyder had to step down from the production of the film due to a family tragedy and was replaced by Joss Whedon, who was then criticized, fairly or unfairly, depending on your fandom, for trying to flip the gritty tone Snyder was going for and change it into basically the adjacent Avengers. Huh, the adjacent Avengers. Sounds like a smart ass line Tony Stark would use when he was like fighting Captain America in Civil War movie or something. I don't know. Anyways, uh, release the Snyder Cut was a years long petition by a group of passionate fans who wanted their grimy Justice League movie. They got the hashtag trending several times, put up billboards in cities around the country, and they rallied around Snyder when he made appearances to keep the dream alive. A little too enthusiastic to be sure, but it looks like their perseverance actually paid off. So it got me thinking. 
if it worked for the Snyder Cut and it worked for Sonic the Hedgehog movie, maybe it can work for sneakers. If we as a sneaker community actually put our heads together and came up with a cool hashtag, we can force these brands to change. By following the playbook of the released Snyder Cut crowd, by the way, with less toxicity, we can bring back sneakers seemingly lost to time or in the battle with bots on the sneakers app. So starting today, with the help of you, the hard pass viewer, I would like to propose these hashtags to bring back these old faves. Hashtag Retro the Pippin 2 or hashtag Pippin 2 ain't easy. Now, now that the last dance is over, there's been a lot of talk about Scotty Pippen and his NBA legacy. Just to get it out of the way, I am firmly Team Scotty and will not tolerate any slander for the man who gave us the iconic mailman don't deliver on Sunday line. By the way, I'm still not over them cutting that out of the dock. Like, come on now. Did they not realize how iconic that line was and how stars aligned to even make it possible? Ugh, that might be my biggest disappointment in the dock that isn't related to Michael, but yeah. Back to the hashtags. While everybody was paying attention to the Air Jordans and the shot drops on sneakers, I was secretly hoping Nike would really surprise us and bring back the Nike Air Pippin 2. We've seen the Air Pippin 1 retro a number of times recently, including a wild collab by Ronnie Feig and Kith. But the Pippin 2 has been notably absent for a while now, and I'm hoping all this attention Scotty is getting will lead to a proper retro sometime in the near future. If not, then maybe we can get the hashtag trending or at Scotty somehow so he knows that we never ever forget. Hashtag retro the Yeezys or hashtag that old Kanye feeling. Like we mentioned in a previous episode, Nike bringing back the Yeezys as a general release would be a peak petty move. Drop all the exclusive samples that never came out, make them available on Nike by you, and change the name to something that only alludes to Kanye but could easily mean something else like the Nike Air, I'ma let you finish. Obviously, Nike isn't in the business of boosting, no pun intended, the name of a competitor, but I feel like most people who would care about a Yeezy Retro are those who already know the history and would have bought Adidas Yeezys regardless. Maybe I'm wrong there. Hashtag Retro the Royal Penny One or hashtag Why Do You Hate Me Nike Sportswear? Okay. So this one, it's for one of my writers. He just had to include it here in the segment. And in fact, I'm going to tell you really the whole story of why he cares so much. See, back when he was a kid, he had a plug, AKA the husband of his sister's sister-in-law, I believe, who worked at Shoe City. It was like this chain discount shoe store that was huge in like the late nineties. Somehow for reasons that are still unclear to him because he's not gonna bother to ask, his sister's sister-in-law's husband claimed that he could get our rider any sneaker that he wanted from a list that included the Air Jordan 11 Concord and white Varsity Royal Air Penny Ones. Looking back, it was probably a shipping manifest and my rider's sister's sister-in-law's husband was either buying them with his employee discount or just straight up smuggling them, but what matters is the choice my rider made. He could have either gone with the Air Jordan 11 and become the coolest kid in school because Jordans were true status symbols back in the days or the Air Penny 1 because Penny Hardaway was obviously one of his favorite players and had a closer connection to him because there was an age gap that was smaller. My rider went with the Penny 1 obviously and he treasured them like they were gold on his feet. He wore them, literally wore them out every chance he got, but he also cleaned them with old toothbrushes like every weekend, years before Jason Mark was even a thing. He kept the dream alive even when the Air Max bubble started to fog up and eventually pop. But between his feet growing and the glue starting to lose its strength, he had to eventually retire them. And he's been waiting for a retro ever since. We've seen the Orlando colorway retro numerous times and the all-star edition come back a few years ago, but the home whites have never been brought back and he's mad about it. When our rider interviewed then Nike Sportswear boss GT Humphrey back in 2012, he even asked him and pleaded with Gentry to retro that Penny One colorway, but obviously it hasn't happened yet. And I know he's not the only Penny Hardaway fan out there who wants this gaping hole in their collection to finally be filled, if gaping hole is the word you want to use. So if there's one hashtag that I could wish happen, let's make it this one, mainly so he'll finally shut up about it and stop mentioning it in every episode of Hard Pass. I know you guys have noticed. Don't forget, it's hashtag retro the Royal Penny one and know that Air Force One tribute a few years back doesn't count at all. <laughs> It's time for the heat check. And it's a short list this week. Uh, there's not a lot of kicks dropping, but there is a lot to talk about. First up, there's the Nike Air Force One reveal. This is May 27th for 110 bucks. 
These women's releases have a tearaway upper that reveals multicolored panels. So I can't wait to see what combinations people will come up with. It should be cool. And also, I want to see dudes try to put these on because they can't wait for a men's version. We don't always have to win, guys. It's okay. Let the women have something. Uh, then we have the Air Jordan 13 Flint on May 30th for $190. So after shock drop on sneakers during the last dance finale, we're getting the proper release for this iconic colorway of the 13. And you know how I said it was going to be easy to get the Fire Red 5s after it had its own shock drop on sneakers a few weeks back? Yep, yeah, I was wrong about that. So good luck with these on Saturday or hashtag Saturday as I like to call it. That's a lie. I, I don't like calling it that. I just call it that because it's how we all feel. But I really want us all to win. I wish we could. Uh, then we have the Travis Scott Nike Air Max 270 Cactus Trails on the 29th for 170. No, I honestly think it's for real this time. Uh, I know we rescheduled these on Hard Pass no less than two times, but after seeing the post on sneakers, I think I know why. Mick Foley, AKA the OG Cactus Jack, is not only the headline post on sneakers, but he's also in the brilliant old school Cactus Trails trading company website. If you don't know, Foley is a wrestling legend who went by Cactus Jack for various companies during the 90s when a young Travis was watching wrestling. However, there was a legal mix up about Scott's use of the Cactus Jack name a few years back, which appears to be settled now. I'm just glad people are now finally going to recognize Foley as the OG and his small part in Scott's ascent in the culture. As for other artists co-opting wrestler nicknames, I'm totally fine with Paul Wall using The Rock's title of the People's Champ and the game using Triple H as well the game. You know how it goes. And then my pick of the week is the Ben & Jerry Nike SB Dunk Low Chunky Dunky. These are on the 26th for 100 bucks. I've actually seen people call this sneaker of the year already. I like these as a Ben & Jerry connoisseur. These are quite good and are really representative of the brand. But to call these the sneaker of 2020 already when we're still in May is a bit premature, guys. And again, with everything slowing down due to the pandemic, is it really that crazy? I mean, I guess we'll see. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. <laughs> And now it's time for Hard Pass, where we take a look at something in the culture that just needs to go. Like the phrase, in these trying times, or in these unprecedented times. Like, I get it, and I'm just as guilty of saying it as the next person, because I don't feel like saying coronavirus or COVID-19 in videos or on social media. But I feel like pandemic is the most appropriate term. I just wish the next time somebody tries to sell me White Claw or air conditioning filters, I didn't hear the somber music and the sad narrator. Like, this is reality now, and we're going to face it head on. Anyway, so this week's hard pass goes to Michael Jordan. I'm, I'm just kidding. Calm down, Jordan fans. Don't get all sensitive on me like you did last week. Gosh, you guys can't even take the slightest critique of Michael Jordan. MJ's not going to send you a pair of Concords because you're a white knight, bro. Anyway, so this week's hard pass actually goes to the lack of homework being done in some parts of the sneaker media world. This past week, Nike SB brought all the smoke to a sneaker Twitter account that posted a picture of a unique pair of SB Dunks. It's got a denim upper and a wavy take on the swoosh via contrast stitching. There's no definite information about it other than a few leaked pictures. There's no release date, no info about how the design came to be, or if there's a possible collaboration involved. But because this Twitter account worded it like the official name was the Nike SB Dunk Low Denim, the official Nike SB Twitter account was not having it. In their tweet, they say, wrong name, no release info. Caption might as well be, here's a leaked photo we found on Instagram. Wow, it's a pretty harsh uh, reply there, Nike SB. But to be fair, I think they're fair game. And to their credit, the account actually did repost the picture again with the caption, here's a leaked photo we found on Instagram. They probably didn't want to go on some like sneaker blacklist or something instead of firing back with a burn of their own. If I were running that particular account, the first thing I would have done after seeing the picture is confirm with sources that I know and get them to verify the validity of the photo. If they can't verify everything, we post a tweet or a story about the shoe but never set anything in stone. We certainly don't have to give it a nickname because that would just go bad real fast. You know, journalism. Remember the Air Jordan 5 Poison Green that was the Space Jam, then the Pro Stars, then just a flaming dumpster fire? Yeah, that was a bad look for the blogs. But it's an issue that we're all guilty of in the sneaker community. Instead of taking the time to do the work and investigate where the picture came from and checking with their contacts, it's a rush to post first and just hope for the best. It's a problem we had to deal with recent heat checks where release dates for Yeezy Quantums and the Cactus Jack Air Maxes are way off. But we were going with the information we had at the time and we stood by it at the time we posted the video. I'm not asking for sneaker blogs to all of a sudden turn into the New York Times level investigative journalist because again, it is sneakers and it's not that serious. But 
a little more time to get it right is a lot better than spending no time and getting it wrong and subsequently getting burned by the Nike SB Twitter. Nobody wants to see that, okay? That's, that's technically a lie. I do want to see that. I love spicy brand accounts, but I'm just hoping we stop it from happening to us. All right, that's going to do it for the show today. Thank you guys for watching Hard Pass. I am Jacques Slade. I'll see you all again next week, but not before I show you how to deal with cats fighting in the background while you're on TV. You don't, and you just hope the carnage isn't bad when you turn around and that white cat is okay. All right, see you guys next week. Peace. Opo.